السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعزائي طلبة الفرقة الرابعة معكم الدكتور أشرف حسن بنكمل مع بعض مادة Advanced Managerial Accounting بعد الجزء الخاص بالدكتور أحمد حسين مفروض كنا نلتقي مع بعض بعد الميد تيرم لكن قدر الله ما شاء فعل نظرا للظروف اللي احنا فيها كنت أتمنى طبعا يبقى في لقاء مباشر بيننا وبين بعض لكن احنا هنستكمل بقية المحاضرات اونلاين حابب انوه في البداية ان هذه المحاضرات موجهة لطلبة الفرقة الرابعة قسم اللغة الانجليزية شعبة اكاونتينج شعبة ادارة الاعمال وطلبة التعليم الفرنسي او طلبة اللغة الفرنسية دي بالنسبة لنا هتبقى اول محاضرة اونلاين وهي في نفس الوقت هي المحاضرة السبعة في ترتيب المحاضرات المحاضرات هتبقى مجهزة بالباوربوينت المدعم بالصوت وبعدين هيتم رفعها من خلال لينك معين هنزلهم على الجروب اللي احنا عاملينه على الفيسبوك كطريقة للتواصل وهتبقى بردك المحاضرات موجودة على قناة اليوتيوب الخاصة بالكلية المحاضرات بتاعتنا هتتضمن مجموعة من التوبكس أو الايشيوز اللي احنا هندرسها تباعا أو الموضوع هندرسه بإذن الله بيتكلم على الاكتيفيتي بيزد كوستينج الـ ABC versus traditional costing system بمعنى نظام التكاليف على أساس الأنشطة في مقابل نظام التكاليف التقليدي نظام التكاليف التقليدي طبعا كل موضوع هندرسه لازم نعرف الهدف من دراسة هذا الموضوع اه بيبقى يتضمن بعض التفاصيل هنمر على هذه التفاصيل لكن في النهاية بنبقى عايزين نعرف المين جول من دراسة الايه من دراسة الموضوع ده فهنبتدي بدراسة اول موضوع اللي بيتكلم على زي ما قلنا activity based costing versus traditional costing system نظام التكاليف الأنشطة في مقابل نظام التكاليف التقليدي Let me remind you about the title of our issue. The title is Activity-Based Costing versus Traditional Costing System. So when you hear the word traditional, you have to know that this system was applied in the past. The companies applied the traditional system in the past and nowadays new system appears instead of the traditional system معنى ده ايه يا جماعة ان مصطلح او كلمة traditional دي بتعبر لي عن شيء تقليدي كان مستخدم في ما مضى وبالتالي نتيجة تغير ظروف معينة ظهر نظم احدث من النظام التقليدي دي الفكرة اللي احنا عايزين نوصلها So first of all, let's take a look at the traditional classification of the manufacturing costs. Manufacturing costs are classified traditionally into direct costs, which are direct material costs and direct labor costs. And the indirect costs which is manufacturing overhead let us explain them in details production manufacturing cost consists of direct manufacturing costs which are direct materials cost and direct labor cost on the other side indirect manufacturing costs or you can say overhead costs 
consists of costs of the production services and costs of the factory ex existence. Briefly, you can say any production manufacturing costs consists of direct materials cost and direct labor cost and overhead cost or indirect manufacturing costs. We have three costs of the production manufacturing costs. Direct material, direct labor, and indirect manufacturing cost, or you can say overhead costs. دي يا جماعة الفكرة اللي احنا بنوضحها الأول بنعرف التصنيف التقليدي للمانيفاكشورين كوست فاحنا بنقول عندنا 3 costs of the manufacturing costs اللي هي direct cost و direct material cost قصدي و direct labor cost و overhead costs التلات اللي هم costs I want also to remind you that our concentration will be on the uh, traditional costing system and the ABC costing system. But up till now, we don't talk about these systems. Just we are discussing the traditional classification of manufacturing costs. So let us know them in details. برضو يا جماعة أنا بوضح الكلام ده بالعربي علشان إحنا مش بنتواصل من على بعض مش فيس تو فيس وأنا بتكلم وبوضح الكلام ده بالعربي إحنا الهدف الأساسي بتاعنا إن إحنا بنعرف نظام التكاليف التقليدي ونظام التكاليف اللي هو الـ ABC اللي هو الترديشنال والـ Activity Based Costing لكن لغاية دلوقتي إحنا ما اتكلمناش لا على ده ولا على ده طيب احنا بس بنعرف ايه؟ بنعرف الـ Traditional Classification of Manufacturing Cost التصنيف التقليدي للـ Manufacturing Cost اللي احنا قلنا اللي هي الـ Direct Materials, Direct Labor و الـ Overhead Cost وهنعرفها زي ما احنا قلنا ايه in details في الأجزاء اللي جاية Let's begin with Direct Materials Direct Materials are the basic raw materials that become an integral part of the product and that can be conveniently traced directly to it. If we are talking about raw materials or direct materials, which are the basic materials that are entered into the basic materials in the mountain. But the most important thing is the sentence that is written by red uh, color اللي هي can be conveniently traced directly to it ده معنى ايه؟ ده معنى ان انا ممكن اربط ال direct material مباشرة بوحدة المنتج اللي هي can be conveniently traced directly to it ان انا ممكن اتتبع هذه التكلفة على وحدة المنتج بمعنى آخر يعني لأنه سألت If I ask a question Can you determine how much direct material does the unit of product cost? If the answer is yes, I can determine it So this is a direct material cost Is this a direct cost? How can you determine the direct material that relate to a specific unit of product. معناه يا جماعة إن أنا لو سألت إن أنا هل تقدر تحدد ال DA من ال direct material تخص منتج معين؟ لو قلت آه أقدر هقول لك إزاي تقدر؟ فأنت هتقول لي هنا 
we can determine the direct material cost hmm, using the source document اللي احنا بنسميها materials requisition form that include the actual amount used of raw materials cost يبقى نقدر فعلا احدد الدايركت ماتيريال كوست اكتوالي ازاي اقدر احدد تاني الدايركت ماتيريال كوست that belongs to a specific unit of product actually from the materials requisition form ال material requisition form اللي هي بيسموها امر الشغل بيسموها بالعربي امر الشغل that include the actual amount used of raw materials يبقى في الوضع ده انا هقدر ها احدد ها the actual amount of direct material used to produce a specific unit of products للتوضيح اكتر suppose we have a manufacturing a furniture manufacturing factory and this factory is producing tables from wood and if i ask you can you determine the cost of uh, direct material the cost of direct material اللي هي the cost of wood يعني uh, for each table بمعنى تاني how much does a unit of product how much does a unit of product cost يبقى هقدر احدد اللي هي التكلفه اللي هي الدايركت ماتيريال اوف اتش تيبل تمام منين لان انا عندي مستندات وبطلع الود او الدايركت ماتيريال اللي هي الود من الستورز اللي عندي من المخازن وفي الحاله دي I can determine the cost of each table actually ليه؟ لأن أنا عندي اللي هي material requisition form اللي هو أمر الشغل اللي بيطلع بيه ال ال direct material تمام؟ يبقى هنا الخلاصة إن ال direct material I can determine the cost of direct material actually from materials requisition form طيب is there any indirect material yes there is indirect material cost such as nails glue and and the uh, uh, brushes ده اللي احنا بنتكلم على ايه على التيبل اللي هي مصنوعه من الود يبقى لو بنقوله is there any indirect materials cost اه في عندنا indirect material cost اللي هي تكاليف آه للمواد غير المباشره اللي هي زي ما بنقوله such as ايه nails اللي هي المسامير والجلو الغرا والبراشز اللي هي الدهانات الخاصه بالكلام ده تمام طيب دي بتدخل في المنتج بتدخل في تصنيع المنتج اه بس بطريقه غير ايه بطريقه غير مباشره يبقى I can't trace them directly to the unit of product يبقى هي indirect material cost I can't trace them directly to the product عشان كده هنا بيقول ايه تحت other non-basic cheaper materials included in the unit of production but cannot be conveniently traced to it are called supplies بيسموها supplies like nails and threads زي ال ال nails اللي هي المسامير وال threads اللي هي الخيوط these supplies are added to the overhead cost فاحنا بناخد ال indirect materials cost بنضيفها على ال overhead cost بنضيفها على ال overhead cost بتعتبر indirect cost indirect cost تمام يبقى انا عندي هنا ال direct material هي دي اللي بتدخل في الايه في المنتج و I can trace I can trace them directly to the product ليه؟ because I can determine the amount of direct material actually using the materials requisition form بقدر أحددها بطريقة فعلية من خلال 
الماتيريال ايكوزيشن فورم اللي هي بطاقه الايه امر الشغل First, let me tell you that direct labor and direct material costs have many things in common. Let us see. Direct labor costs are those labor costs that can be easily traced to individual units of product. يبقى برضو يا جماعة من هنا من الحاجات المشتركة. أو من الحاجات اللي بتشبه الـ direct material اللي هي الـ direct labor can be traced easily to the units of product. We can trace uh, the direct labor directly and easily to the specific units of product. أقدر أتتبع الـ direct labor cost على منتج معين. يعني أقدر أحدد تكلفة المنتج ده من الـ Direct Labor قد إيه؟ طيب Direct Labor is sometimes referred to as Touch Labor since it consists of the costs of production workers only who touch the product as it is being made معناه إن ساعات بيسموا الـ Direct Labor ده اللي هي Touch Labor اللي هي التكلفة الخاصة بالبرودكشن وركرز اونلي اللي هي العمال او العاملين في مجال البرودكشن او في عملية التصنيع او في عملية الانتاج بصفة خاصة اللي هم in touch with the, the machinery in touch with the machinery اللي هم مرتبطين بالالات وعملية التصنيع بصفة خاصة تمام Examples of uh, direct labor costs, wages paid to automobile assembly workers. وخلي بالك هنا بيتكلم على إيه؟ هنا بديك examples of direct labor costs. بيتكلم على wages. Wages paid to the automobile assembly workers. اللي هي الأجور الخاصة بالعاملين في مجال الإيه؟ في عملية التجميع بتاع إيه السيارات. الأجور اللي هي wages. لما بنتكلم على direct labor Direct labor cost بنتكلم على wages أجور اللي هي بتبقى per hour بنتكلم على wages as with the, as with the uh, direct material if I ask you a question can you determine the cost of direct labor that belongs to a specific unit of product the answer is yes I can بمعنى ان انت تقدر تحدد the cost of labor تكلفة labor او تكلفة العمل that belongs to a specific unit of اللي خاصة بمنتج معين اه اقدر يبقى هنا the cost of direct labor can be determined actually using the ticket or the time ticket form. If we can use the time ticket form to determine the cost of direct labor actually. Track is on the kilmet actually. تمام؟ يبا هنا بيقول لي This labor cost is directly charged to the product based on the source document which is Time ticket form اللي هم بيسميها time ticket form بالعربي بطاقة العمل أو بطاقة الشغل. That include the actual amount used of direct labor cost. دي بتتضمن the actual amount used of direct labor cost اللي هي التكلفة الفعلية للعمل اللي هي the actual direct labor cost. تمام؟ If how can we determine the actual amount of direct labor cost by using the time ticket form? يبقى الخلاصة زي ما قلنا في الدايركت ماتيريال We can determine the direct labor cost actually خلي بالك actually تمام by using 
تايم تيكت فورم اللي هي بطاقة الايه؟ بطاقة الشغلة which include ها the actual amount of direct labor cost تمام؟ يبقى direct material cost we can determine it actually with direct labor cost we can determine it actually برضو السؤال هنا زي ما سألنا في ال direct material are there any indirect labor costs عندي تكليف عمل غير مباشرة اه يبقى هنا the answer is yes we have uh, there are uh, an indirect labor cost these costs I can't trace them directly to a unit of production hmm? يبقى زي ال direct material I can't trace the indirect labor cost directly to a unit of production. تمام؟ طيب عشان كده تحت بيقول لي other labor costs cannot be conveniently traced to a unit of production are called indirect labor costs. Indirect labor cost like surface workers' wages. ال such as maintenance, handling, cleaning مش هقدر اعرف إيه إيه لو انا بتكلم على ال ال unit اللي عندي او ال product ال production unit اللي هي ال table مش هقدر اعرف ال table دي ال cost بتاعت ال ال maintenance بتاعت الماشين نصيبها منها قد ايه مش هقدر ال 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 cleaning workers لما عملوا cleaning للماشين او لل factory مش هقدر احدد بالظبط التيبل دي كان نصيبها من الكلينينج سيرفيس قد ايه فعشان كده بنسميها indirect labor cost بتدخل في المنتج اه بتدخل في المنتج بس ايه indirectly بطريقه غير مباشره بطريقه غير مباشره such as قلنا maintenance handling and cleaning costs and supervisor salaries يبقى احنا بنتكلم على السالاريز خلي بالك السالاريز دي اللي هي الايه المرتبات بتعتبر fixed cost بتعتبر fixed costs تمام these indirect labor costs are added to the manufacturing overhead cost يبقى برضو لو عندي indirect labor cost indirect labor cost we support them as overhead cost we support them as overhead cost بنعتبرهم زي ما اعتبرنا ال indirect material يبقى عندي ال indirect material وعندي ال indirect labor cost We suppose these costs are overhead cost. نحطها في ال overhead. The third item of manufacturing costs is manufacturing overhead cost. Manufacturing overhead cost is different from direct material cost and direct labor cost. So manufacturing overhead costs are costs that cannot be traced directly to specific units produced. That means it is difficult to trace the manufacturing of our head cost directly to a specific units of product. يبقى هنا الاختلاف بين manufacturing of our head cost with direct labor with direct material إن يبقى في صعوبة جدا إن أنا أتتبع manufacturing of our head cost على واحدة معينة يعني أربط منتج ب المانيفاكتشرنج اوفر هيد او اقدر احدد نصيب منتج بصوره دقيقه من المانيفاكتشرنج اوفر هيد بينا اي كانت ديتيرمين ذا مانيفاكتشرنج اوفر هيد كوست ذات ريليت تو ا سبيسيفيك يونت اوف برودكت اكيورتلي اقدرش احددها بصوره ايه بصوره دقيقه ليه 
مبدئيا حنقول because this costs are common costs relate to many units of products or relate to many products it is a general cost يبقى هي تكلفة ايه؟ تكلفة عامة زي ما احنا بنقول ها relate to ها many products خاصة بمنتجات كتيرة تمام؟ طيب زي ما احنا قلنا ال manufacturing overhead cost contains indirect materials يبقى indirect materials اللي هي materials used to support the production process such as lubricants and cleaning supplies يبقى indirect materials بتدخل ضمن الايه ال manufacturing overhead تمام and indirect labor اللي هي wages paid to surface employees and workers who are not directly involved in production work such as maintenance and handling workers, supervisors and security guards. يبقى دي أمثلة للإيه لل indirect labor. دي أمثلة لل indirect labor. وإحنا برضو بنقول إن indirect labor included in the manufacturing overhead. متضمنة في ال manufacturing overhead. We have also other overhead costs. Other overhead costs. These are costs of operating the machines such as fuel, gas, heat, water, steam, cooling, power, spare parts, pressure, etc. All these costs, we, we suppose them as variable costs. We have also cost of the factory, such as management salaries, rent, insurance, depreciation, and property tax. All these costs, we suppose them as Fixed costs. If we have the indirect material, indirect labor, other overhead costs, all of these costs included in manufacturing overhead cost. Manufacturing overhead cost. We, the most important question here is why we cannot trace the in the manufacturing overhead cost because it is a general cost relates to many uh, products relates to many products كيف انا هنا ما اقدرش احدد المنتج معين التكلفه بتاعه المانيفاكتشرنج اوفر هيد كام بصوره دقيقه اي كانت ديتيرمين ذا مانيفاكتشرنج اوفر هيد cost that belongs to a specific unit actually or I can't determine it accurately ما اقدرش احددها بصورة فعلية او بصورة ايه او بصورة دقيقة تمام برضو ليه هنعرف اكتر من سبب احنا قلنا هنا because it is a general cost تكلفة عامة belongs to the whole factory تخص المصنع كله أو belongs to many uh, products. Let me give you a conclusion of what we have discussed up till now. We said that production manufacturing costs consists of direct manufacturing costs, direct manufacturing costs, which are Direct material costs 
and direct labor costs. These costs can be easily traced to individual units of product. Yep, uh, uh, direct manufacturing costs, electrical, direct material, or direct labor. We can trace them easily and directly to a specific units of product. أقدر أحدد نصيب الوحدة من المنتج منهم بطريقة مباشرة وبطريقة سهلة وبطريقة فعلية زي ما احنا شوفنا بالنسبة للدايركت ماتيريال by using uh, the uh, material uh, form اللي هي بطاقة uh, أمر الشغل وبالنسبة للدايركت ليبر by using the time take it form اللي هي بطاقة العمل أو بطاقة الإيه؟ بطاقة الشغل. طيب on the other hand indirect manufacturing cost or we can say overhead costs overhead costs these costs contains indirect material indirect labor and other overhead costs the subject is we can't trace these costs directly to a specific units of product okay yeah, but indirect manufacturing cost our overhead cost can not be traced directly and easily to specific units of product I can't determine the overhead cost that belongs to a specific unit of product accurately and actually. And this is the problem. يبقى عندي direct manufacturing costs ما فيهاش مشكلة I can't determine the direct material and direct labor accurately and actually أقدر أحدد المنتج بياخد قد إيه من direct material و direct labor بصورة ها accurately بصورة دقيقة جدا لكن بالنسبة لل indirect manufacturing cost أو overhead cost I can't determine uh, it uh, easily it is difficult to uh, determine the indirect uh, manufacturing cost uh, uh, that belong to a specific unit of product when it's hard to add overhead costs or indirect manufacturing overhead costs in uh, a دقيقة اللي هي بتخص منتج معين واحنا هنا قلنا دي ايه دي ذا بروبلم هنا دي الايه المشكلة هنا في تساؤلات ايه الحل طيب ها مش هقدر احددها بصورة دقيقة لكن I can determine it with another way اقدر احددها بطرق تانية بس هتبقى ايه هتبقى بطريقة أقرب إلى الدقة بطريقة أقرب إلى الدقة تمام؟ إزاي؟ ده اللي احنا هنشوفه بقى يبقى ده اللي احنا هنشوفه How can we determine the overhead costs that belongs to a specific units of product إزاي نقدر نحدد ال overhead cost اللي هي بتخص منتج معين طيب يبقى اللي هيجاوب لنا على السؤال ده a traditional costing system a traditional costing system النظام التقليدي هيجاوب لنا على السؤال ده وما نشوف النظام التقليدي بيشتغل ازاي هل في عيوب اه لو في عيوب ظهرت 
يبقى احنا محتاجين a new system instead of the traditional costing system ها يحل محل ايه يحل محل التراديشنال مين النيو سيستم اللي هو الاكتيفيتي بيزد كوست سيستم اللي هو نظام التكاليف الايه الانشطه يبقى احنا هنا فهمنا الموضوع ماشي ازاي الموضوع ان انا عندي هنا الدايركت ماتيريال والدايركت ليبر اللي هي الدايركت كوست ما فيهاش مشكله اي كان ديتيرمين ذيم اكيورتلي اند اكشولي اقدر احددهم بصوره فعليه وصوره ايه وصوره دقيقه لكن المشكله فين المشكلة في الاوفر هيد كوست في الاوفر هيد كوست اي كانت ديتيرمين ذيم اكيورتلي ما اقدرش احددهم بصورة ايه بصورة دقيقة طب اقدر احددهم اه اي كانت ديتيرمين ذيم ها بصورة ها تبقى قريبة كلوز تو ذا ايه ذا اكيورت مانر بصورة اقرب للايه اقرب للدقة ازاي ادي علامات الاستفهام اهي اللي بيقول لي ازاي اللي هو التراديشنال كوستنج سيستم ده هيورينا ازاي نحدد ولو التراديشنال في سام ديفكتس سام ديسادفانتجز يبقى هنستخدم ايه ا نيو سيستم اللي هو الاي بي سي ايه الاي بي سي سيستم تمام يلا نشوف Let us continue to know why we cannot trace the overhead costs to a specific unit of product. يبقى ليه إحنا مش بنقدر نربط ال overhead cost بمنتج معين؟ إيه السبب؟ هنعرف. بيقول لي overhead costs cannot be applied or charged directly and actually. to the product like direct material cost and direct labor cost for the following reasons يبقى هيوضح لي هنا ايه هي الريزونز اللي بتخلي ان ما اقدرش اربط الاوفر هيد كوست بمنتج معين بطريقه مباشره وبطريقه فعليه زي direct material cost and direct labor cost هنا the first reason the overhead cost Elements are common in nature. زي ما احنا قلنا, it is a common cost, a general cost, تكلفة عامة. Such as for all products, not for a specific product. يبقى هنا احنا بنعتبرها for for the the factory as a whole, للمصنع كله. For all products that are produced inside the factory. يبقى تكلفة عامة مرتبطة بالايه؟ بالاول برودكتس. عشان كده كاتب شايفين اللي هي باللون الازرق كاتب واي ريت. يعني قصده يقول لك واي وي ار واي ار وي يوزنج ريت. ليه احنا بنستخدم هنا الريت؟ يبقى هنا هنوضح وي ار يوزنج ذا ريت تو اساين The overhead cost to each product. نستخدم ريت معين من خلاله بعمل assignment تخصيص لل overhead cost على كل منتج. يبقى بحدد ها نصيب كل منتج من ال overhead cost using the overhead rate. هنستخدم ريت معين. وده هنشوف. طيب the second reason is Actual overhead for the period is not known or not available until the end of the period. يبقى هنا برضك مش بقدر أحدد the actual overhead cost إلا في نهاية ال A at the end of the period في نهاية الفترة. وبالتالي thus inhibiting the ability to determine job costs during the period. من الصعب إن أنا أحدد ال A the job costs. خلال الايه الفتره عشان كده بيقول لك واي استيميتد يعني واي وي ار استيميت 
hmm? the uh, overhead costs. If overhead costs are estimated. لما بنيجي نحسبها بنحسبها as estimated. تكلفة مقدرة. تمام؟ at the beginning of the period. at the beginning of the, of the period. طبعا وده أفضل uh, for the purpose of evaluation. ده الأغراض الإيه؟ التقييم. لو أنا uh, at the beginning of the period عملت uh, estimation لل overhead cost يبقى at the end of the period هيبقى عندي actual overhead cost by comparing these costs أقدر أحدد إيه؟ uh, أقدر أحدد uh, if the performance is good or uh, if it is uh, not good. تمام؟ يبقى ده اللي هو السكند ريزون. The third reason is the fixed portion of the overhead cost make the actual costs fluctuate seasonally. Thus misleading decision makers. الـ fixed portion اللي هو الجزء الثابت بيجعل التكلفة الفعلية إلى حد ما بتختلف من بيحصل لها تذبذب يعني إيه على حسب الفترة اللي هي إحنا فيها وبالتالي ده بيعمل تضليل أو بيخلي متخذي القرار بيتخذوا قرار غير إيه غير سليم وبالتالي إحنا هنا بيقول لك واي أنيوال ريت ليه بنحسب الريت ده على أساس أنيوالي ليه بنحسب الريت على أساس أنيوالي يبقى الريت اللي إحنا بنحسبه ده هو على أساس إيه على أساس أنيوالي يبقى ده ها يبقى الريت ده belongs to the period والبيريود دي هي عبارة عن إيه؟ وان يير أو عبارة عن إيه؟ annually بنستخدمها سنوي يبقى هنا دي these are the three reasons that tells us why we cannot uh, 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 trace the uh, indirect cost or the overhead costs uh, to a specific unit of products تمام؟ يبقى أنا عندي هنا ريت والريت دوت هيبقى estimated ريت وبالتالي estimated overhead costs والريت ده هيبقى إيه؟ annually زي ما هو موجود إيه؟ بالـ sentences اللي مكتوبة بالـ red بالـ uh, blue colors باللون الأزرق دوت تمام؟ so therefore Using an estimated predetermined overhead rate makes it is possible to estimate job costs constant and sooner. If I here, we will get back. We have the problem. I have the problem. The problem is I can't determine the overhead cost that belongs to a specific unit of product. Here, I can't determine it in a precise way. But I can determine it as we said in a precise way. close to the a the accurate manner بصورة أقرب لل a للدقة إزاي by preparing or by calculating ها an estimated predetermined overhead rate إن أنا بحسب هم rate معين بسميه estimated predetermined overhead rate معدل خاص بالتكاليف ال a اللي هي الأوفرهيد الإضافية تمام How can we compute that? How can we compute this rate? Huh? The answer will be in the next slide. The traditional costing system will answer us this question. First, the traditional costing system will answer us this question. Okay? يبقى هنستخدم الأول هنعرف إزاي how we can uh, calculate how we can prepare the predetermined overhead rate uh, by using the traditional costing system هنستخدم traditional costing system to assign the overhead cost to the unit of products هنستخدم ال 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 traditional system النظام التقليدي علشان أخصص أو علشان أوزع الأوفر هيد كوست اللي تخص إيه؟ اللي تخص منتج معين تمام؟ and after that after the traditional we will take the ABC system اللي هو نظام تكاليف الأنشطة after we finish the traditional costing system so let's show the details
As we see in the previous section, the problem is it is difficult to determine the overhead cost for each product accurately and uh, actually. To solve this problem or to determine uh, the uh, overhead costs that can be charged to each product, we're going to use the traditional costing system. At first, we will use the traditional costing system. The idea is we want to compute an overhead rate that can be used to charge these overheads to each product. Simply, the overhead rate equal the estimated overhead cost divided by the volume of activity. So the volume of activity here can be estimated direct labor hours. The question here is why we choose the direct labor hours as a volume of activity. To answer this question, you have to read these sentences. It says here, traditional cost systems were created when manufacturing processes were labor intensive. Therefore, direct labor hours is assumed to be the relevant activity base to charge overhead costs to products in these labor intensive processes. When computing the overhead rate, we divide the overhead costs by the most relevant activity. The most relevant activity. We here the most relevant activity is the direct labor hour. Why? Because the most manufacture process were labor intensive. The most manufacturing process were labor intensive. Can fill modi معظم الشغل أو معظم العمليات depends on labor uh, work بتعتمد على العمالة ما كانش في automation ما كانش في uh, technology زي اللي موجود حاليا uh, في الماشينز عشان كده احنا بنقسم ال, ال overhead cost uh, by uh, او على ال, ال, the most relevant activity اللي هو labor او direct labor hours تمام ده عشان نحدد ال ال overhead rate that can be used to assign overhead costs to each product. تمام ده according to a according to traditional costing system according to the traditional costing system. خلاص so according to the traditional product costing system overhead cost can be applied or you can say can be charged or you can say can be assigned to the products using a single plant wide single plant wide single plant wide اللي هو overhead rate we can use a single overhead rate one overhead rate if according to traditional costing system we are going to use one overhead rate we can say it single blunt wide okay it'll have a predetermined overhead rate based on direct labor hour okay right here i'm going to focus on the only model one to assign the overhead cost to the products using what using a uh, the direct labor hours as a volume of activity. هنا the volume of activity بتاعتي أو مستوى النشاط بتاعي اللي هو the direct labor a direct labor hour. Why we are using the direct labor hours? Because the most manufacturing process were labor intensive. That 
occurred in the past that occurred in the past يبقى ان كان معظم العمليات عندي بتعتمد على ايه تعتمد على labor work العماله إيه؟ او العمل القائم على العماله او العاملين تمام مش على الاوتوميشن مش على التكنولوجيا في التصنيع اوكي يبقى الكلام ده كان فين in the past اوكي It says in the bottom of the slide, labor hours related closely to the volume of activity in the factory. Consequently, these traditional product costing systems often are referred to as volume-based costing system. If احنا ممكن نسمي traditional costing system or volume-based costing system. Volume-based costing system. ممكن نسمي كده أو كده. Okay, طيب. Let's continue. I want to make sure that you understand these points. Don't forget that according to the traditional costing system or according to the volume-based costing system, we use a, sing a single plant wide or we use one uh, overhead rate to assign or to charge the overhead costs to the products. Be sure you understand this point because when we are comparing between the traditional costing system and the activity-based costing system, you have to know the difference between them. This slide gives us more cl clarification about the traditional costing system. It says here, Assumption was satisfactory when direct labor was a major portion of total manufacturing costs. How I also able assumption here. I also we assume the uh, direct labor hours is the volume of activity when computing the uh, rate or the overhead lay because the major portion of total manufacturing cost is direct uh, labor cost. يبقى بمعنى يا جماعة ده بنوضح ان هو احنا افترضنا ان احنا هنستخدم ال volume of activity as direct labor hours لي لان كان عندنا الماجوريتي اوف كوست انسايد ذا توتال مانيفاكتشرنج كوست از دايركت ليبر معظم التكلفه اللي بيتكون منها uh, التكلفه الكليه للانتاج او المانيفاكتشرنج كانت uh, عباره عن دايركت ليبر كوست عباره عن تكلفه ايه عمل وبالتالي من المنطقي ان انا استخدم uh, مستوى نشاط اللي هو الفوليوم اكتيفيتي Relate to it this uh, uh, relate to this uh, cost and the whole direct labor hours. The direct labor hours. Okay. Therefore, high correlation exists between direct labor and changes in overhead costs. Even I have here a relationship between the direct labor. و اي تغير في الاوفر هيد كوست This traditional product costing system assumed a direct relation between 
the consumed resources and the volume of produ products produced. This means that the cost of consumed resources depends on the volume or the number of the units produced. And this, the shape you see reflects this assumption that uh, the cost of consumed resources depends on the volume of units produced or you can say the higher the number of units produced or surface provided the higher the cost of consumed resources will be يبقى الشكل اللي قدامنا ده بيوضح العلاقه اللي هي الدايركت ريليشن شيب بين ذا ريسورسز اند ذا برودكت اند سيرفيسز وممكن من الشكل ده نقول ان الريسورسز او الكوستس اللي عندي بتزيد او بتعتمد على البرودكتس او على السيرفيس ذات اي بروفايد تو ذا كاستمر فكلما زادت البرودكتس او ذا فوليوم اوف برودكتس برودوسد او ذا نمبر اوف سيرفيسز ذات اي بروفايد كلما زاد الكوست اوف ذا ريسورسز كونسيومد كلما زاد الكوست اوف ذا ريسورسز كونسيومد تمام يبقى هنا العلاقة ايه مباشرة بين البرودكتس اور سيرفيسز والريسورسز كونسيومد والريسورسز الموارد الايه المستهلكة الموارد المستهلكة اللي هي الكوستس يعني تمام فما بتزيد البرودكتس اليونتس اوف برودكتس او النمبر اوف سيرفيسز بيزيد معاها بطريق مباشر الايه الريسورسز كونسيومد او الكوست اوف ريسورسز كونسيومد Okay. Uh, look at the additional information at the bottom of the slide. Notice that predetermined overhead rate in traditional costing system are often based on direct labor hours or direct labor cost for job order costing. يبقى أنا ممكن أستخدم ال 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 base بتاعي اللي أنا بقسم عليه. as a direct labor hours or direct labor cost اللي هو ال volume of activity يعني ده ايه for job order costing لنظام التكاليف اللي هو ال job order and we can use the machine hours for process costing او ممكن يبقى ال base بتاعي هو machine hours if we are using the process costing لو بنستخدم نظام التكاليف اللي هو قائم على البروسيس ايه بروسيس كوستنج اوكي ذس از ان اديشنال انفورميشن يو هاف تو نو سو ليت سي ذا نيكست سلايد To understand how can we use the traditional costing system to assign overhead cost to the products, let's take the first example. Our first example says, our bulk corporation manufactures deluxe and the standard racket ball rackets. Our ball's total overhead costs consists of assembly costs and inspection costs the following information is available look at the information here we have four columns the first one for the cost under the cost we have assembly and inspections activities the second column the first product which is deluxe Deluxe consumes 500 machine hours 
for the assembly and 350 machine hours for the inspection and uh, the total labor hours for the deluxe product is 2100 labor hours for the standard the standard consumes 500 machine hours for the assembly and 150 machine hours for inspections and the total labor hours that the standard consumes is 1900 labor hours the last column for total cost total cost for assembly for the two products is $30,000 and total cost for inspections activity for the two products is $50,000 our poll is considering switching from one overhead rate based on labor hours to activity based costing required how much total overhead cost assigned to delux and standard rackets assuming traditional costing system so the requirement is uh, uh, here the requirement here is uh, to compute or to calculate the total overhead cost that can be assigned to each product to deluxe and to standard racket product notice that the company now the company now is using uh, the traditional costing system and it use the labor hour as the activity again i say that notice the company uses the direct labor hour as a base to assign the overhead costs to these products okay let's see the solution of this example To solve this exercise, you have to ask yourself, what system are we going to use? In this case, we are going to use the traditional costing system. The traditional costing system. And also, at first, you, at first you have to prepare your data. So, you have to compute total overhead cost total overhead cost total overhead costs equal overhead cost for assembly plus overhead cost for inspection that means $30,000 plus $50,000 so the total overhead cost equal $80,000 You have also to compute the total number of direct labor hours because the base we are going to use as a base to assign overhead cost to product is direct labor hours. So you have to compute the total number of direct labor hours. 
total number of direct labor hours equal total direct labor hours for DLOX for the first product plus total direct labor hours for the standard which is the second product 2100 plus 1900 direct labor hours so the total number of direct labor hours equal 4000 hours 4000 hour this is the first step you have to do after that you have two steps you have to be done two steps that have to be done which are the first one to calculate the overhead charging rate or you can say predetermined overhead rate overhead charging rate equal total overhead costs over total number of direct labor hours يبقى الخطوة الأولى أنا بحسب overhead charging rate أو you can say predetermined overhead rate إزاي بقول total overhead cost divided by total number of uh, direct labor hour أو ممكن نقولها DLH اللي هي direct labor hour this is the first step to compute the overhead rate the overhead rate here equal 80,000 dollars which is computed above divided by 4,000 DLH direct labor hours which also computed above so the overhead charging rate equal 20 dollars per DLH 20 dollars per direct labor hours okay this is the first step you have to do to assign the overhead cost to the two products the deluxe and the standard products you have to do the next step which is to compute total overhead cost assigned to each product the total overhead cost assigned to each product equal predetermined overhead rate which is computed at the last step times direct labor hours direct labor hours these hours that belongs to each product so to compute that the total overhead cost assigned to DLOX product equal 2100 DLH direct labor hours times 20 dollars per DLH so the total overhead cost for DLOX product equal $42,000 the same as for the standard product for the standard product total overhead cost assigned to standard product equal 1,900 DLH times 20 dollars per GLH so the total overhead cost assigned to standard product equal $38,000 so by using these steps you can determine the overhead cost assigned to each product when we are using the traditional costing system Lesson track is we are using one charging rate. We are using 
1 over head rate بركز على 1 over head rate تمام ده according to traditional huh, costing system خلاص this is the first step to compute the overhead rate the second step to compute the total overhead cost that can be assigned to each product D بتساوي predetermined overhead rate which is computed above multiplied by direct labor hours that belongs to each product okay يبقى دي الطريقة اللي احنا بنمشي بيها to compute the uh, or to determine the overhead cost that can be assigned to each product ماشي تمام let's take the next exercise Example 2 says Zoom Company incurs $350,000 of overhead costs each year in its three main departments, machining which costs $200,000, inspections which costs $100,000, and debacking which costs $50,000. The machining department works 4,000 hours per year. There are 500 inspections per year. And the packing department packs 500 orders per year. Information about Zoom's two products is as follows. So the company produces two products, product A and product B. And the information that relates to each product is as follows machining hours for product A 1000 for product B 3000 inspections for A 100 inspections for B 500 inspections orders baked for A 350 orders for B 650 orders direct labor hours for product A 1700 and for B the direct labor hours is 1800 if the traditional costing based on direct labor hours is used how much overhead is assigned to product A and product B this year? So, the question here is, if we are using the traditional costing system, based on the direct labor hours as a base to assign overhead cost to these products, how much overhead costs that can be assigned to each product. Okay. To solve this uh, example, you have to follow the following steps. Let's see in the next slide. In this example, we are using traditional costing system. And as usual, firstly, you have to prepare your data. 
So you have to calculate the total overhead cost. We have here three uh, activities, which is machining, inspections, and packing. The total overhead cost for these activities equal 200,000 plus 100,000 plus 50,000 dollars. The summation of these amounts equal 350,000 dollars. So the total overhead costs equal 350,000 dollars. Next, you have to calculate also the total number of direct labor hours. Why? Because we use the direct labor hours as a base to assign the overhead cost to these products. The total number of direct labor hours for these products, product A and product B, equal 1,700 plus 1,800 direct labor hours. So the summation will be 3,500 direct labor hours. So remember that after you're doing anything, you have to prepare your data. After you're preparing your data, two steps have to be done. The first step is to calculate overhead charging rate, which equal total overhead cost divided by total number of direct labor hours. In this case, total overhead cost equal 350,000 dollars which is computed above over total number of direct labor hours which is 3,500 direct labor hours also we computed this uh, number above so the result will be 100 per DLH. The overhead rate or overhead charging rate equals 100 per direct labor hour. To determine the overhead cost that can be assigned to each product, you have to do the next step. Total overhead costs assigned to the product equal predetermined overhead rate times direct labor hours that belongs to each product. In this case, total overhead cost assigned to product A equal direct labor hours that belongs to product A, which is 1,700 ELH, multiplied by the overhead charging rate which equal $100 per DLH so the result will be $170,000 as a total overhead cost assigned to product A the same as for the product B the total overhead cost assigned to product B equal direct labor hours for product B which is 1,800 DLH multiplied by $100 so the result will be $180,000 as a total overhead cost assigned to product B. يبقى احنا بنفشي بنفس بنمشي بنفس الايه بنفس الخطوات ايه بنعمل preparing for the data and we do two steps to arrive at the total overhead cost that assigned to each product. Okay. أتمنى أن يكون الموضوع مفهوم وسهل بالنسبة لكم
let's go to see the next example Before taking another example, let's discuss the activity-based costing system. نظام التكاليف القائم على أساس الأنشطة. We need to know from this discussion what is the activity-based costing system. What is the difference between the ABC system and the traditional costing system? And what is the advantage of using the activity-based costing system? Before reading <coughs> these sentences in the slide, let me explain the main idea of this subject. By asking a question, why did the companies need to shift from the traditional costing system to the ABC system? So the answer for this question is the changing of the circumstances. If the circumstances change it, we have to shift to a new system. How can the company applied traditional costing system when the manufacturing processes were intensive labor work and the direct labor hours was a suitable base to assign the overhead costs. But nowadays these circumstances are changed. Manufacturing processes became more advanced and depend on automated technology. So the direct labor cost represents minority portion of the total manufacturing cost. Consequently, it is not logical to continue using direct labor hours as a base to assign overhead costs, but we need multiple bases according to the activities that the company practices. To clarify what I said about why companies need to shift from traditional account, traditional uh, uh, costing system to the activity-based costing system, let's read these sentences. Direct labor is still often the appropriate basis for assigning overhead costs when direct labor constitutes a significant part or a major part of total product manufacturing cost. And also, if there is high correlation exists between direct labor and changes in overhead cost. يبقى ده بيوضح الكلام اللي احنا قلناه امتى يبقى الدايركت ليبر هو مناسب جدا as a base of assigning overhead cost لما الدايركت ليبر cost represents a significant part of total manufacturing cost كمان if there is a high correlation between direct labor and changes in overhead cost لو كانت الظروف دي متوفرة يبقى we are gonna use the traditional costing system طيب if these circumstances change it we have to use a new system لو الظروف اتغيرت يبقى لازم ايه اعمل shifting to a new system طيب look at the bottom of the slide 
Now, tremendous changes in manufacturing and services includes. يبقى هنا حصل many changes تغييرات كثيرة. Such as what? فهنا بيقول first moving to automation which leads to. طبعا many companies use uses automation or automated technology in their manufacturing process. تعتمد على النظم الأوتوماتيكية أو النظم الحديثة في الإنتاج. طيب ده أدى لإيه؟ decreases in amount of direct labor uses. أدى إلى decreases in the amount of direct labor usage. انخفاض في تكلفة العمل لـ direct labor. And also significant increase in total overhead cost. على الجانب الثاني حصل ها significant increase in the total overhead cost زيادة فين زيادة في ال overhead cost تمام يبقى هنا حصل ايه حصل changes in the in the circumstances طب هل من المنطقي ان احنا ها نستمر uh, of using the uh, traditional system طبعا لا طب let's continue I asked at the end of the previous slide, is it logical to continue using the traditional costing system in the new circumstances? The answer, definitely not. معنى ده ان انا مش هقدر استمر في استخدام ال traditional costing system لو اتغيرت ال لو اتغيرت الظروف. دي كانت آخر جملة انتهت بها السلايد اللي فاتت حبيت أكررها بس تاني علشان حسيت إن الكلام اتقطع من التسجيل. So let's continue to show what changes happened in the manufacturing environment. It says here products differ greatly in the volume complexity. Or in the manufacturing complexity, significant change in manufacturing process or number of products. The products lines are numerous, diverse, and require different degrees of support services. These are many changes that happened in the manufacturing environment that lead us to shift to the activity based costing system so that i said it is no logical to use one overhead rate based on one base to assign overhead costs So it says here, therefore, it is no longer appropriate to use plant-wide predetermined overhead rates based on direct labor or machine hours when a lack of correlation with overhead cost exists. طبعا في الحالة دي مش هقدر استخدم predetermined overhead rate مش هقدر استخدم single-wide plant اللي انا كنت بستخدمه مع الترديشنال but we need here to use multiple rates we need to use multiple rates according to many bases to assign the overhead cost to the products so we need here for a new approach this approach is called activity based costing system Activity Based Costing System. The abbreviation is ABC. So it says at the bottom of the slide, complex manufacturing processes may require multiple allocation bases. Yeah, زي ما قلنا, زي ما احنا قلنا, 
ها وي نيد مالتيبل الوكيشن بيسز محتاجين العديد من الاسس اللي بنستخدمها عشان نعمل الوكيشن فور ذا ايه فور ذا اوفر هيد كوستس This approach is called activity-based costing system. يبقى اللي بيوفر لنا الكلام ده اللي بيوفر لنا multiple allocation basis هو activity-based costing system نظام التكاليف القائم على الايه؟ القائم على الانشطه. Let's know more details about this system. This slide gives us more information about activity-based costing. The activity-based costing is a costing approach that yields accurate information about cost of resources, activities, and cost objectives. Here we say that activity-based costing is a أو مدخل للتكاليف بيوفر معلومات دقيقة عن تكلفة الموارد أو تكلفة الأنشطة أو تكلفة الـ Objects الـ Cost Objects اللي هي يقصد بيها any object of cost زي الـ Customer زي الـ Products زي الـ Services any cost object The premise of the costing approach is that the firm's products or services are the results of activities. يبقى هنا عايز يوضح إن إن ال 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 products of the company or the services that the company provide are the result of activities. هي نتاج للقطة اللي بتقديها الشركة and activities. Use resources which incur costs. والأنشطة اللي بيتم تأديتها هي اللي اللي بتستهلك أو بتستخدم الموارد اللي بتتسبب في حدوث اللي حدوث التكلفة. يبقى من هنا from these sentences we can say the products consume the activities. And the activities consume resources. The منتجات هي اللي بتستهلك الأنشطة، ومن ثم الأنشطة هي اللي بتستهلك الموارد. يبقى عندنا we have two stages to apply activity-based costing. عندنا مرحلتين. We will show them later. The next sentence represents the first stage. It says, "Costs of resources are assigned to activities based on the activities that use or consume resources." We can say, "Resource consumption drivers." مسببات استهلاك الموارد. Yeah, this is the first stage. The second sentence represents the second stage. It says, "Costs of activities are assigned to cost objects based on activities performed for the cost objects." You can say, "Activity consumption." Drivers. مسببات استهلاك الأنشطة. مسببات استهلاك الأنشطة. So the cost of consumed resources depends on the number of activities and the size of each activity. The size of each activity, the number of times or how many times we need to use a specific 
activity. And the size of activity required to produce the products regardless of the number of units produced. But on the axis of the traditional costing system, هنا بيعتمد على how many times we need to repeat the activity to uh, produce a specific product. تمام؟ لكن ال traditional كان بيعتمد على uh, how many uh, units we need to produce to uh, incur the cost. Okay, let's show the next slide. This slide explains the two stages that we use to apply the activity-based costing system. The stage number one contains two steps. The first step discusses define activities, activity cost pools, and cost drivers. يبقى في الخطوة الأولى أنا بحدد الـ activities الأنشطة activity cost pools اللي هي أوعية التكلفة هنشوفها يعني إيه and cost drivers اللي هي مسببات التكلفة أو بنسميها الـ activity measures the second steps relate to assign overhead costs to activity cost pool assign overhead cost to activity cost pool أنا بعمل تخصيص الاوفرهيد كوست على اوعيه التكلف على اوعيه التكلف الخاصه بالنشاط طبعا تمام هنا بيوضح بعض المصطلحات اللي الاكتيفيتي مينز ذات اني ايفنت اور اكشن ترانزاكشن اور ورك سيكونس ذات كوزز ا كوست تو بي انكيرد ان Producing a product or providing a service. Activity cost pool, a distinct type of activity. For example, ordering materials or setting up machines. Cost drivers, any factors or activities that have a direct cause effect relationship with the resources consumed. If these are some terms, we have to know them. Stage number two of ABC contains also two steps. Step number three, calculate activity charging rate based on the activity cost driver. Step number four, assign overhead cost to the product. Assign overhead costs to the products. These are the steps that we have to follow when applying the activity cost uh, system. We saw the steps included in the two stages of the activity-based cost system. I'll tell you more when we take an example to show you how can we apply this system.
This slide clarifies what I explained in the previous slide. The conclusion here that we have two stages to apply the activity-based costing system. Stage number one. In the stage number one, we read from bottom to top. It says activities consume resources. Activities consume resources. That means the activities are the causes that make the resources cost to be exist. يبقى هنا بتكلم على stage number one بقول إن الأنشطة هي اللي تستهلك إيه ال resources cost اللي هي تكلفة الإيه تكلفة الموارد يبقى هي المسبب لل resources cost. In the stage number two we also read from bottom to top it says products consume activities. Products consume activities. It means the products is the uh, the products are the causes of activities cost to be exist. The products are the causes of activities cost to be exist. يبقى هنا بيتكلم على إن المنتجات هي اللي بتستهلك الأنشطة، المنتجات هي اللي بتستهلك الأنشطة، وبالتالي المنتجات الـ products هي المسبب لتكاليف الإيه؟ لتكاليف النشاط، تمام؟ The two stages of the activity-based costing system can be explained by using this shape. Look at the top of the slide. The first stage identifies significant activities in the production and assigns overhead costs to each activity in accordance with the cost of the company's resources used by the activity. معناه ايه يا جماعة يبقى في الفيرست ستيج انا بحدد الانشطة الرئيسية اللي, بتسا... اللي بتساهم في الانتاج ثم بيتم تخصيص الاوفر هيد كوست على كل نشاط اساسي وفقا لما تم استهلاكه من تكلفة موارد الشركة بواسطة هذا النشاط تمام الانشطة الاساسية اللي انا اقصد بيها الاكتيفيتي كوست بولز بقصد بالانشطة الاساسية الـ Activity Cost Pools اللي هي زي آه زي الـ زي ما احنا شايفين اللي هي الـ Ordering and Receiving Materials دي آه an example of cost pools setting up machines this is an, uh, another example of cost pools آه machining ودي يعني مثال تاني للـ Cost Pool assembling another cost pool لغاية الآخر بقى نوصل لغاية الإيه؟ سوبرفايزنج كوست بول يبقى دي كلها ها اكتيفيتي كوست بول بيسموها مجمعات تكلفة النشاط مجمعات تكلفة النشاط تمام؟ عشان كده بنقول ذا اوفر هيد كوست اسايند تو ايتش اكتيفيتي كونستيتيوت وات از كولد and activity cost pools معناه ان ال overhead cost اللي بيتم تخصيصها على كل نشاط ده بيتم تخصيصها على كل نشاط اساسي زي ما احنا شايفين بتشكل ما يسمى بالاكتيفيتي كوست بولز يبقى انا بجمع ال overhead cost 
ووزعها على مجمعات التكلفة ديت يبقى كل مجمع تكلفة له نصيبه من الأوفر هيد كوست بول تمام After assigning overhead costs to activity cost pools in the stage one, cost drivers appropriate for each cost pool are identified in stage two. Then the overhead costs are allocated from each activity cost pool to each product line in proportion to the amount of the cost driver as consumed by the product line. هوضح برضو الكلام ده بقول في المرحلة الأولى بعد ما تم تخصيص overhead cost على activity cost pools على مجمعات التكلفة ده كان في المرحلة الأولى بعد كده بيتم تخصيص overhead cost على مجمع بيتم تحديد مسببات التكلفة الملائمة بعد ما خصصنا الأوفريد كوست في المرحلة الأولى بيتم تحديد مسببات التكلفة الملائمة لكل مجمع تكلفة اللي هي الكوست درايفرز تمام في المرحلة الثانية وبالتالي بيتم تخصيص الأوفريد كوست من مجمعات التكلفة على المنتجات على أساس ما تم استهلاكه من مسببات تكلفة بواسطة المنتج أو بواسطة المنتجات يبقى في المرحلة الثانية أنا بشوف كل منتج نصيبه قد إيه من الأوفر هيد كوست نصيبه قد إيه المنتج جاي تحت خالص نمرة ثلاثة نصيبه قد إيه من الأوفر هيد كوست ده على أساس إيه على أساس الكوست درايفر والكوست درايفر دي لازم تبقى ملائمة ها لازم تبقى مور ابروبريت تو ذا كوست بول يعني مثلا هنا في السيتنج اب ماشين اللي هي رقم اثنين اللي هي الكوست بول رقم اثنين هلاقي نمبرز او نمبر اوف سيت ابس يبقى الكوست درايفر هي عبارة عن النمبر اوف سيت ابس اللي هي عدد مرات السيت ابس اللي هي تجهيز الالات يبقى دي افضل كوست درايفر افضل مسبب تكلفة لايه؟ للكوست بول اللي هو سيتنج اب ماشينز تمام ومثلا لو احنا خدنا البينتنج كوست بول بينتنج اللي هي قبل الاخيره بينتنج كوست بول الكوست درايفر اللي هي ذا موست ابروبريت كوست درايفر فور ذيس كوست بول از نمبر اوف بارتس عدد الاجزاء <تصفيق> عدد الاجزاء اللي بيتم ايه اللي بيتم عمل لها بينتنج تمام فعلى اساس الكوست درايفرز ديت اقدر اعرف ها الاوفر هيد كوست ذات كان بي اساين تو ذا برودكت اكوردنج تو ذيس كوست درايفرز تمام ويبقى دي ها ستيج 2 انا بحاول اشرحها باكثر من طريقه علشان الايه المعنى او المفهوم يبقى واصل ليكم Let's go to the next slide. This slide shows us how can practically allocate overhead costs to the products. But before explaining the slide, I want to draw your attention to a significant difference between the traditional costing system and the ABC system. When allocating overhead costs using traditional costing system, We use only one. We use only one overhead rate that depends on also one activity, which is direct labor, as a base to allocate overhead costs. This way doesn't give us the accurate cost per unit because 
we ignore many activities that can contribute in producing the products. On the contrary, when using ABC, we should calculate multiple pool rates according to the numbers of activity pools to allocate overhead costs from each activity cost pool to each product. And then the cost per unit using this method will be more accurate. يبقى هنا أنا بلفت نظرك لحاجة مهمة جدا لما استخدمنا traditional costing system كنا علشان نعمل assignment for the overhead cost to the products كنا بنستخدم single plant wide أو one overhead rate نستخدم معدل تحميل واحد تمام على أساس برضو one activity اللي هو direct labor تمام اللي هي الدايركت ليبر اورز وبالتالي كنا بنهمل ها ماني اكتيفيتيز ذات كان كونتريبيوت تو ذا ايه تو ذا برودكت بنهمل انشطه كتيره ممكن كانت تساهم في المنتج عشان كده كانت الكوست بير يونت الكوست بير يونت بير يونت نوت اكوريت ما كانتش ايه ما كانتش دقيقه بشكل إيه كبير لكن في الاي بي سي احنا يجب إيه علينا ان احنا تو كالكوليت مالتيبل بول ريتس لازم بنعمل بنحسب اكتر من معدل تحميل خاص للنشاط معدل هي البول ريتس اكتر من معدل تحميل للانشطه اللي عندي دي اكوردنج تو ذا نمبرز اوف ايه اوف ذا اكتيفيتيز او ذا بول اكتيفيتي بولز عدد الاكتيفيتي بولز اللي عندي هعمل لكل بول ايه ريت خاص بي تمام وبالتالي لما باجي احسب الكوست بير يونت فور ذا برودكت بيبقى مور ايه مور اكيوريت ليه؟ لان انا هنا اي تيك ان اور كونسيدريشن اول ذا اكتيفيتيز ذات كونتريبيوت تو برودوس ذا برودكت خدت في اعتباري كل الانشطه اللي ساهمت فين؟ اللي ساهمت في المنتج ويبقى الاكتيفيتي بيست كوستك از از مور مور لوجيكال ميثود تو assign overhead cost to the products تمام so let's return to the slide here he gives an example of activity cost pool في الستيجي نمبر 1 اهي اعطيني مثال للاكتيفيتي كوست بول اللي هي الماشينري طبعا ماشينري انا بجمع فيها ها بعمل gathering to the All activities that relate to machinery, such as what, such as maintenance, depreciation, computer support, lubrication, electricity, and calibration. All these activities are related to machinery. بجمع كل دول وسمي ده إيه activity costable. Activity costable هو إيه machinery. تمام يبقى اسمه machinery costable. وحط في all the cost. لا total budgeted cost. كل التكلفة اللي أنا إيه الـ الـ overhead cost overhead cost that relates to machinery يبقى دي الـ stage إيه الـ stage number one تمام طيب when are answering the exercise أما أجي أحل بقى التمرين هل ليا دور في المرحلة دي اللي هي الـ stage number one؟ لا The example will give you the information uh, already given. The information that relates to stage number one. يعني حيدي لك activity cost pool وحيدي لك الكوتس الكوست درايفرز that relates to each pool. يبقى في stage number one انا ما بعملش حاجة في التمرين. ده هو اساسا uh, this information are given to you. تمام؟ فهيديني الاكتيفيتي كوست بولز هيديني طبعا مالتيبل اكتيفيتي كوست بولز اكتر من ايه؟ من مجمع للتكلفه وهيديني الكوست درايفرز ذات ريليت تو اتش كوست بول تمام؟ يبقى في الستيج نمبر 1 دي اما بنيجي بقى نحل ما لناش ايه؟ ما لناش دور فيها. طيب 
هما بتدور فين؟ Our role will be in strategy number two. In the stage two, to allocate the overhead cost to the product, you have to do two steps. The first step is to calculate the bull rate. To calculate the bull rate. Low model تحميل النشاط. The bull rate equal to total budgeted machinery cost. Machinery here as an example. Total budgeted machinery cost. Low cost bull. Divided by total budgeted machine hour. Total budgeted machine hours. The cost driver. If I'm going to sum total budget machinery cost. اللي هي الـ cost of the cost pool على total budget machine hours اللي هي الـ cost driver that relate to this cost pool اللي هو أنسب مسبب تكلفة اللي هو أنسب cost driver بالنسبة للإيه؟ للماشينري تمام؟ فهيديني دولار بير ماشين hour دولار بير ماشين hour تمام؟ this is the first step the second step is to cal to allocate the overhead cost to the product. يبقى أنا هنا عايز أحدد the assigned overhead cost. Assigned overhead cost equal pool rate per machine hour that I calculated in the last step multiplied by machine hours per product. Multiplied by Machine hours that belongs to the product. So we will arrive at the assigned overhead cost to this product. Here in the stage number two, at Insash, we have to do these two steps. I will have. اللي هو a calculation of pool rate طبعا if we have multiple pool if we have multiple activity pools I have to calculate a pool rate for each one يعني لو عندي مثلا خمسة يبقى هنحسب pool rate لكل واحد من الايه من الخمسة تمام Okay. Let's take uh, another example of bull rates. This is another example of activity cost pool, which is quality assurance cost pool. Quality assurance cost pool. The same as the last slide, we are gathering all the activities that relate to quality assurance cost pool, such as engineers' salaries, engineering supplies, engineering software, depreciation on engineering equipment. All these costs constitute quality assurance cost pool. Okay, this is the first step or step number one. You don't want to do anything in this step. In stage number two, we have to do two steps. The first step is to calculate the pool rate. The pool rate for quality assurance activity equal total budgeted quality assurance cost divided by total budgeted quality inspections. So inspections here is 
the appropriate cost driver that relates to quality assurance. The second step is to assign overhead cost to the product. Assigned overhead cost equal pool rate per inspection multiplied by number of inspections per product. Number of inspections per product. Okay. These are some facts about activity-based costing system you have to know. The more complex a product's manufacturing operation, the more activities and the cost drivers likely to be present. Activity-based costing system does segregate overhead into various cost pools to provide more accurate cost information. Low volume products often require more special handling than high volume products. Assigning overhead using ABC will usually increase the cost per unit of low volume products and will decrease the cost per unit of high volume products. Activity-based costing system can be expensive to use. Although using ABC, some arbitrary allocation continue. You have to know also the classification of activity levels. To identify resources cost for various activities, to improve the process of collecting activities cost pools, and to increase the accuracy of product costing, a firm classifies all activities cost pools according to the way in which the activities consume resources into the following four categories. The first category, facility level activity. The second one is product level activity. The third one is patch level activity. And the fourth one, the unit level activity. We can make a classification for the levels according to these categories. These are the four categories that have just discussed in the previous slide. You can read about them to know uh, some details about the four categories.
This slide gives us more details about the four levels categories and the types of activities that relate to each one and the appropriate cost drivers for each activity. Let's take some examples. For the unit level activities, types of activity, let's take machine related. The best cost driver is machine hours. Let's go to batch level activities. Types of activities, let's take equipment setup. The best cost driver for, for this activity is number of setups or setup time. Let's go to the product level activities and take product design as an activity. The best cost driver for this activity is number of product designs. Finally, facility level activity. The activity, let's take the plant management. The best cost driver here is number of uh, employees. These are uh, some examples of uh, uh, types of activities and related cost drivers. طبعا في الاكسايز او في الاكزامبل اللي هيديهولك هيبقى اعطي لك الايه الكوست درايفرز ذات ريليتس تو ايتش اكتيفيتي اوكي اي وونت يو جاست تو انديرستاند ذيس كاتيجوريز اند تو نو ذيم Finally, it should be noted that applying activity-based costing system increases the accuracy of product costing by increasing the percentage of direct cost to the total cost by relating between the cost and its cost driver. The cost, the cost driver is the activity that causing the, existen, the existence of these costs. يبقى هنا ان الاكتيفيتي بيست كوستنج بيحقق زياده في دقه التكلفه الخاصه بالمنتج من خلال اول حاجه زياده نسبه التكاليف المباشره ضمن التكلفه الكليه للمنتج ده اول حاجه طيب the second thing is selecting the proper base for charging the overhead cost the best base used to allocate the cost is its cost driver تمام يبقى تاني حاجة هو زيادة بيعمل على زيادة الدقة في اختيار الأساس الملائم لتخصيص أو لتحميل الأوفرهيد كوست على المنتجات يبقى بالسببين دول uh, the, uh, using the uh, activity based costing gives us more accurate cost per unit for the product you have to know these uh, sentences carefully ركز عليهم كويس جدا لان دول مهمين Let's take example one. This example that we have taken in the slide number 10. In the slide number 10, you have to go back to review the data of this example. 
we solved this example using the uh, traditional costing system now the requirement here is how much total overhead cost assigned to d logs and standard rackets assuming activity based costing system يبقى ده نفس الاكزامبل يا جماعه اللي كان في سلايد نمبر 10 المره اللي فاتت حليناه بالتراديشنال سيستم المره دي هنحله ب الاكتيفيتي بيزد كوستنج سيستم اوكي ذا فيرست ستيب هير تو كالكوليت ذا اكتيفيتي بيزد كوستنج سيستم ذا اكتيفيتي بيزد ذا اكتيفيتي تشارجنج ريتس يبقى اكوردنج تو اكتيفيتي بيزد كوستنج سيستم The first step is to calculate activity activities charging rates. Activities charging. If you go back to the example, you can find we have two activities. They are assembly, and its cost is thirty thousand. Inspections, and its cost is fifty thousand. And we have two products, which are deluxe and standard. So in this case, we have to compute two activity-based rates, two activity-based overhead rates, one for assembly and another one for inspection. How can you calculate the activity-based overhead rates? Give activity-based overhead rates equal estimated overhead per activity. Divided by expected use of cost drivers per activity. For assembly, thirty thousand dollars divided by the total number of machine hours for the Dilux and the standard. Ibn Abagama, the total numbers of machine hours for the two products. The result will be thirty dollars per machine hour. For inspection, the activity-based overhead rate equal fifty thousands divided by the total numbers of inspections for the two products. Alhamma, three hundred and fifty plus one hundred and fifty. So the result will be one hundred dollars per inspection. If I make it, I have two rates: one for assembly and another one for In inspection. Now let's go to the second step. The second step is to calculate the total overhead cost assigned to products. We have here two products. So first, we will calculate the total overhead cost assigned to the Dilux product. To do that, you have to prepare a table uh, consists of four columns. The first column contains activity cost pools. The second column contains expected use of cost drivers per activity. The third column uh, contains activity based overhead rate, and the last column contains cost assigned. For assembly, the logs consumes 500 machine hours times activity based overhead rate that we have calculated above. Thirty. The cost assigned is fifteen thousand. For inspections, the Dilux consumes three hundred and fifty inspections times the overhead rate, which is one hundred, equal thirty-five thousand. So the total overhead cost assigned to the Dilux product equal fifty thousand dollars. Okay, we'll do the same job for the standard product. يبقى هنعمل نفس الكلام للمنتج الثاني اللي هو الستاندر.
to calculate the total overhead cost assigned assigned to the standard product you have to prepare a table like what we uh, prepared in the uh, last slide for the deluxe product to calculate the total uh, cost assigned to the standard product for assembly a standard product consumes 500 machine hours multiplied by the overhead rate which is 30 dollars so the cost assigned will be 15 thousands for inspections standard product consumes 150 inspections times 100 dollar which is the overhead rate that we have calculated uh, before so the result will be fifteen thousand dollars so the total cost assigned to the standard product will be the summation of these two amounts it will equal thirty thousand dollars يبقى احنا بنمشي بنفس الطريقة ديت عشان نحسب ايه يا جماعة عشان نحسب ال total cost assigned to each product okay let's take another example Let's take example two. This example that we have taken in the slide number 12. So you have also to go back to review the main data of the example. When solving the example number two, we assuming that we are using the traditional costing system. Now the requirement here is if activity based costing system is used, how much overhead is assigned to product A and product B this year? To remind you, we have two products in this example, product A and product B, and we have three activities, which is machining, inspections, and packing. So to solve this example using the activity-based costing system, you have to do two steps. The first step is to calculate activities charging rates. Activities charging rates. Okay. These rates is according the number of these rates are according to the numbers of uh, the activities. In this case, we have three activities, so we will uh, compute three uh, charging rates. To compute the uh, charging rates you will use this formula activity based overhead rate equal estimated overhead per activity divided by expected use of cost driver per activity for machining the cost of uh, machining activity is two hundred thousand dollars divided by the total number of machines hour for uh, the two products 1000 plus 3000 so the result will be 50 dollars per machine hours for inspections the overhead rate for the inspections equal the cost of this activity which is 100,000 divided by the total number of inspections for the two products 100 plus 500 so the result will be 166.67 per dollar per test inspection the overhead rate for the last activity which is baking equal the cost of baking activity 
which is 50, 50 thousands divided by the total numbers of orders for the two products 350 plus 650 so the result will be 50 dollar per order so up till now we have finished the first step let's go to the next step which is to calculate the overhead costs that can be assigned to each product When computing total overhead cost assigned to each product, you have prepared tables like you see in the slide for each product. For product A, if you want to calculate the total cost assigned to product A, the total cost assigned to product A is the summation of the cost assigned for the three uh, activities. For machining, product A consumes 1000 machine hours times $50. For inspections, product A consumes 100 inspections times 166.67 dollars for baking the product A consumes 350 orders times 50 dollars so the summation of cost assigned for these three activities will be 84 thousands and hundred sixty seven dollars we will do the same job for the product B but product B consumes three thousand machine hours five hundred inspections 650 orders so the summation of these uh, activities will gives you the total costs assigned to product b the total cost assigned to product b Let's take example 3. James Inc. currently uses traditional costing procedures, applying $800,000 of overhead to products Beta and Zeta. So we have two products in this example. On the basis of direct labor hours, the company is considering a shift to activity-based costing and the creation of individual cost pools that will use direct labor hours DH, DLH production setups and number of parts components as cost drivers data on the cost pools and the respective driver volumes follow product we have beta and zeta pool number one which uh, its cost driver is DLH 
beta consumes one uh, uh, thousand and twenty uh, GLH, zeta consumes two thousand and eight hundred uh, GLH. The cost of pool number one is one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Pool number two, which its cost driver is the components. which is cost driver, sorry, which is cost driver is uh, setups. Beta consumes 45 setups. Zeta consumes 55 setups. And the cost of this pool is $280,000. Pool number three, which its cost driver is the components. Beta consumes 2,025 pieces. Beta consumes 750 pieces. And this uh, cost of the bull number three equal $360,000. The requirement he here is how much overhead cost allocated to beta and zeta by using traditional costing procedures? So he asks you to determine the overhead cost allocated to each product using the traditional costing system. Okay, we are going to use the traditional costing system. في البداية وبعد كده هلاقي the requirement number two how can we allocate these costs to the products using activity based costing فخلينا نشوف الأول إذا بنعملها بالتراديشنال As I said before, when using traditional costing system, you have firstly to prepare your data. So you have at first to calculate the total overhead cost. The total overhead cost here is the summation of the total cost of the three balls, which is eight. hundred thousand dollars and you have also to calculate the total number of direct labor hours because the base that we are gonna use as a base of allocating these costs is the direct labor hour we have two products so the summation of the direct labor hours for these products equal 4,000 hours. After that, the first step you have to do to calculate the overhead charging rate. Remember that when using the traditional costing system, we use only one overhead rate so the overhead charging rate equal total overhead cost which is eight hundred thousand dollars multiplied uh, divided by total number of direct labor hours which is four thousand direct labor hours so the overhead rate equal $200 per DLH $200 per direct labor hour The next step is to calculate the total overhead cost assigned to each product To do that, you have to follow this formula Total overhead cost assigned to the product 
equal the overhead rate multiplied by direct labor hours that belongs to each product. So the total overhead cost assigned to beta product equal 1200 direct labor hour times $200 the result will be $240,000 the same as for the Zeta product total overhead cost assigned to Zeta product equal 2,800 direct labor hours multiplied by 20 multiplied by 200 dollars so the result will be 560,000 dollars so in this case we used the traditional costing system and when we using the traditional costing system we don't remember we use only one overhead charging rate this rate is based on the direct labor hour and this is the first step and the second step to calculate the overhead costs assigned to each product okay traditional uh, let's uh, show how can we uh, solve this example if uh, we are using the uh, activity based costing system the same example but here he asks you to determine how much overhead cost allocated to beta and zeta by using activity based costing system procedures to do that we have first to calculate the activities charging rates in this example we have three pools three activity pools so we are gonna compute three activity based overhead rates okay the uh, overhead rates for bull number one equal 160 thousand dollars divided by the total number of DLH for the two products 1200 plus 2800 so the rate for pool number one equal 40 dollars per DHL 40 dollars per DLH the overhead rate for pool number two equal $280,000 divided by the total uh, numbers of setups for the two products 45 plus 50 so the rate uh, for pool number two equal $2,800 per uh, setup the overhead rate for pool number three equal three hundred and sixty thousand dollars divided by the total uh, uh, number of the pieces for the two products two thousand and twenty five uh, sorry two thousand and two uh, uh, 
250 uh, pieces plus 750 pieces so the uh, uh, overhead rate for the bull number three equal 120 dollars per uh, piece After that, we will go to uh, the step number two to calculate the total overhead costs assigned to uh, each product. For product B, as I said before, you have to prepare uh, uh, the table like you see. For pool number one, the beta consumes uh, 1,000 1200 DLH times 40 dollars for pool number two beta consumes 45 45 uh, setup times 2800 dollars for pool number three uh, beta consumes 2250 pieces times one hundred and twenty dollars so the summation of the cost assigned for these two activities will give you the total cost assigned will give you the total costs assigned to the product beta which equal four hundred and forty four thousand dollars To continue, we will do the same job for product Zeta. Let's see in the next slide. To calculate the total overhead costs assigned to product Zeta, you have to prepare a table like in the last slide. For product Zeta, Zeta consumes 2,800 direct labor hours times $40. And Zeta consumes also 55 uh, setups times 2800 dollars it also consumes 750 pieces times 120 dollars so the summation of these two pools constitutes the total costs assigned to Zeta products. So the total uh, cost assigned to Zeta equal 356,000 dollars. If we have done this, we have example number three using the activity based costing. I will give you the example as a homework to try to solve it. Let me read the example with you. High tech products manufactures three types of remote control devices economy, standard, and DLOX. The company which uses activity based costing has identified five activities and related cost drivers. Each activity, its budgeted cost, and related cost driver is identified below. Here we have uh, five activities which are machine ma uh, material handling, material insertion, automated machinery, 
finishing packaging and uh, the next column uh, gives us the cost of each activity and the third column gives us the cost driver of each activity the following information <clears throat> pertains to the three products line for next year it gives here units to be produced for uh, economy for standard and deluxe orders to be shipped for the three products number of parts per unit for the three products a machine hours per unit for these products and uh, at last labor hours per unit for the three products requirement number one assume that high tech is using a volume based costing system a, a volume based costing system uh, is uh, the same as a traditional uh, costing system Hona, we can uh, call it as a volume based costing, sy costing system all, uh, or uh, a volume based costing system how much of the f of the preceding cost would be assigned to the products requirement number two assume that high tech is using an activity based costing system how much of the preceding cost would be assigned to the product يبقى عايزك تحل مرة بال volume based costing system اللي هو traditional costing system ومرة تانية uh, with the activity based costing system try to solve it uh, ونحاول uh, نحله معاكو in the next time At this point, we finished this lecture. This lecture is number seven. And in the next lecture, we will continue the same issue by Iznillah. Yep, this is the lecture seven, guys. We finished it. The first lecture we had online. The next lecture, or by Iznillah, the lecture we had, we will continue the same issue. We are continuing it online. وهقول لكم على الجروب هنقدر نرفع الماتيريال دي اف ام بالظبط اوكي بالتوفيق ودعواتي بالنجاح وبالسلامه للجميع